are gods, we are kings We march in faith cause we believe we can Change the world to what it needs Stand against our enemies cause we can Yeah We are kings demanding change Cause we believe we can Sirach 26 and 14. Bring it I want out. you guys to understand, when it comes to the uh, Israelite women, the so-called black and Hispanic women today, they are not shamefaced. Right. They go back and forth with another man as if we're equal. Right. God said we ain't equal. Right. The order is God, Christ, man, women, the children. Right. Right. If you got a problem with that, you got a problem with God. Right. Let me go show you a woman that can humble herself to a man. That is of God. Read what you got. Right. Sirach 26 and verse 14. Bring it out. I Loving woman is a gift of the Lord. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Right. Now let's go back to Proverbs 7 and 10. Get let's out. read some of the characteristics of a harlot or a whorish woman. Right, Watch out. this. I guarantee it's going to be probably opposite from a blessing from God. Watch this. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. And subtile of heart. And subtle of heart, sneaky, deceptive, playing games, laying snares and traps for out. you to fall in. Changing her face to be more attractive, to set you up, Jeez. to lure you into that house Bring and rob out. you. Right. And give you an STD. Right. Subtle of heart, knowing what she's doing. Read it again. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot Come on. and subtle of heart. Read. She is she is what? She is loud. Read. And stubborn. And stubborn. If a man tells you what to do and is backed up in the scriptures, there should be no back and forth. That's right. And if there is back and forth, guess what? You are not a silent and loving woman according to the scriptures. Right. And that is against the commandment of the Most High God. That's right. America has taught you to go back and forth against the man. But God is calling our sisters back to repentance. That's Right. That's what you got to understand. It's time to change your mind. Right. Proverbs 3 and 5, we're teaching the basics of the Bible. Right. But guess what? This is brand new to you because right. our people haven't been taught this. Right. You understand? But that's why we out here today. Right. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Come on. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Is that hard to do? No. No? It's not, right? Okay. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Come on. And lean not unto thy own understanding. Unto thy what? Unto thy own understanding. All right, give me the order. First Corinthians 11. Bring it up. So let's see, let's see how hard it is or how hard it's not. Let's find out. Read what you got. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Bring it out. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So our heads is Christ. Right. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Read it again. And the head of the woman is the man. One more time. And the head of the woman is the man. Y'all see that? Y'all see what the Bible says? Does America teach that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Bring it up. Romans 3, 4. Bring it up. Romans 3, 4, man. Jeez. It's time we get back to the Bible and out of the ways of Babylon the Great, uh -oh. a.k.a. the United States of America. Right. Read what you got. 
the book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true. Let who? Let God be true. Come on. But every man a liar. Every man a liar. I don't care yeah. if the president say it. If it don't match you with the Bible, he is a liar. That's, right. That's what you got to understand. That's what you got to understand. If God don't say it, to hell with it. You must understand that. It's time for repentance. God is trying to figure out who are the true worshipers who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Who's ready to worship God the right way? Bring it out. Who's ready to do it? Who's ready to stop playing around in these Sunday churches? Right, right. That's doing nothing but taking your money. Right. Right. Trying to get into your pants. Who's ready to stop playing? Bring it what day is the Sabbath day? If y'all know that, why y'all playing for it? You see that? You know everything else is a lie. You understand that the Bible says that the Sabbath day is on Saturday. But what day does Christianity say? What day do they say? Sunday. Christianity, yes, Sunday. That's what Christianity. Seventh day of Venice, they say Saturday. Right. Seventh day of Venice, I'm going to let you know something. They trash too. They ain't keeping God's commandments either. Right. That's what you got to understand. You either keep them all or don't keep them at all. right. There's only one way. Give me that in Ephesians real quick. Bring it out. Ephesians chapter 4 and 4. There's only one way, brothers and sisters. I know they tell you, what do they got? Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, Church out. of God in Christ, Episcopal, African Methodist. They got all of this. That ain't nothing but confusion. Yeah, right. And God is not in confusion. Right. Read what you got. How you doing, my brother? Read this. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4. Bring it out. There is one body. There's what? There is one body, come on, and one spirit, even as ye are called, come on, and one hope of your calling. Read. One Lord. One what? One Lord. Now, let's deal on that. It says one Lord. Christianity teaches that the Lord looks like a white man. Bring it a out. Caucasian with blonde hair and blue eyes. So if the Bible's saying that there's only one Lord, and the Bible says that he's a black man with red eyes. Which Lord is it? What'd you say? It's what the Bible says. That's right. That's exactly right. Read that again from the top. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord. One faith, one baptism. One baptism. One baptism. What baptism is that talking about, brothers and sisters? Okay, I actually see where you're going with that. Let me hear you. We're going to deal with it. You say him? Okay. When it says one baptism, what baptism is that talking about? You're not sure? You're not sure? <laughs> okay, let's find out. Give me 1 Peter 3.21. Let's find out what baptism is talking about. Okay? Read this. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. The light bigger. Well, I'm telling even baptism. What? Baptism. Baptism. Come on. The always now save us. Come on. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. So it says, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. What would put away the filth of the flesh? Bring it out. Think about it. Eat. When you take a shower, what do you use? So. And water. read it again from the top. First Peter chapter three and verse twenty-one. The light bigger went until even baptism doth always now save us. Not the putting away of the flesh, the filth of the flesh, but the of a good conscience toward God. So my question to you is this. If you were to get baptized today, right? In the article of clothing that you currently have on. Right? But you come out wearing the same exact thing. Is there any change? Absolutely not, sister. So read it again from the top. Calm down. Focus on the words. Read it correctly. First Peter's chapter 
3 and verse 21. The light figure, where until even baptism doth always now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. So it's not about getting dipped in water. Bring it up. Bring. But the answer of a good conscience toward God. Right. What would give you a good conscience toward God? I don't know. Huh? My, my, I don't know. I don't know. What would give you a good conscience toward God? What would make you feel good about your relationship between you and God? Bring First time too. What would make you feel good, my sister? Think about it. Good conscience. What would make you feel good? You not sure? <laughs> Give me that in Romans real quick. Romans 7 and go back. I'll show you something. Okay. <laughs> and I pray you listen too, brother. Alright, watch this. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. You see that? It says the law is holy, and the commandments are holy. They are also, don't worry about them distraction system. Read that again from the top. Focus on this. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. You see that? The law is what's good. Remember it said in 1 Peter, a good conscience toward God. Right. So how do you get that good conscience? By doing what? Keeping what? The laws of God. That's, That's right. how you do it. So, do you want to keep God's laws? You plan or you, or you serious? Huh? <laughs> you serious or is you plan? Bring it out. What is it, sis? He ain't nothing to play with. All right. You knew that Sabbath was on um, for how long? Oh, God. Yeah, it's a cut. It comes so fast. Yeah. You don't even see it. Yeah. It just, yeah. you're like, oh, shoot. Dang, I have to play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my question to you, is you serious or is you playing? No. What is it, sister? No. I really want to be You really want to be serious? All right, what you going to do? So give me your plan of action. Because Negroes, they'll say I'm serious and go home, go to the store, go to the laundromat, go to work, go to the club, and be like, you know what? I forgot what happened two days ago. Bring so, out, give me your plan of action from this point uh, day on. <laughs> see? You see what I'm saying? You playing. Because you ain't really thinking out. You ain't count the cost. Because as soon as you leave, you're going to go back to your folly right. and put yourself in the danger of the judgment. That's what you're going to do. Right. And you know it. That's the thing about it. You know it. That's what the Bible, the Bible is cutting you right now. You're like, dang, why am I feeling like that? Because God's making you feel like that, sister. That's, right. That's why. What you going to do? Who is this? Is this your sister? That's your friend. That's it. Okay. All right. All right, what you going to do, sis? Huh? You say, what, you gonna change? What's gonna change you? All right, so who gonna teach it to you? The Bible? You gonna teach yourself? How? By reading, so you can understand this Bible in the midst of sin? What scripture is that? I know you can, so I'm asking you, how, what's going on, my brother? We out here teaching our people who they are according to the scriptures. Look, I know, sis, you don't understand the Bible. Because if you understood it, you would be you would be doing what's right. You don't understand the Bible, how serious it is. So I'm asking you, how you going to learn the right way, sister? Yeah, so you, it's, ain't like, it's not laughing matter. Most I can put you to death tonight. This ain't funny. Hey, what you about to do? Since you want to play, what you about to do to change your life? You know? You say repent? Let's go on repentance. Give Bring me that. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Bring it out. Bruh, what's your nationality? You say black? Is that in the Bible? Or is that in the Crayola box? Bring it out. Why not? That's what? The Bible ain't real according to what? Can you prove it? Bring it out. So, bruh, that's crazy. That's crazy what you're saying. You say a blanket statement the Bible ain't real, but you have no factual proof. So, so what made you come to that conclusion, my brother? Like what? Give me an example, my brother. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to build with you. Give me an example. 
Yeah. Are you sober right now? Yeah, I'm sober. I'm you, tired, though. Are you tired? Yeah, I've been up since 5.30 and I got a city in the morning. You got to get up in the morning. You got a fire? Yeah, I got a fire. I got a fire for 20 years. Okay. All right, but if you got to go, you got to go. Give me repentance. Eight, uh, 1 Kings 8, 46. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy. And that's what God did. That's what God did. God delivered us to the enemy. And you, my brother, coming from the west coast of Africa, give me our Isaiah 42 and 22 real quick. The most high God delivered us to the hands of our enemies. We got put in cargo slave ship, and a lot of our people got left behind. But that don't mean that you don't fit the curses, my brother. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. Come on. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. The Bible says that the Israelites are a people robbed and spoiled. Right. Hey, what was the uh, the old name for God? What did they used to call that uh, land mass? The what? The, the Gold Coast. Why don't they call it the Gold Coast anymore? No. Because the white man came and took all the gold. That's right. He is dead. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. Snared in holes. I've been to Ghana a few times. So I've witnessed it. I've been in Kumasi. I've been in Accra. I've seen the, the situation of our people in Ghana. Read it again from the top. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 28:49. Why is that? Why are they snared in holes? Why are they at the bottom? How did they get robbed? And who did it? Bring but it ultimately, who is responsible? Read this from the top. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee. God said he is going to put the spirit on another nation. Read it again from the top. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. As swift as the eagle flying. As swift as what? Swift as the eagle flying. What's the uh, symbol for America? The national symbol. A what? An eagle. An eagle, not just America, the French, the British, the Germans, the Romans. It's the eagle. That's the symbol of the European nations. God is telling us exactly who he was going to bring against us. But it's us who don't who don't put it together. Right. But he put the spirit on his prophets in the last days to come teach the remnant of his people that's going to get it. Everybody's not going to get it. Right. Some of y'all will understand and still not repent. And when those nukes come, you will go down with Babylon. Right. But you don't have to. That's what we teach him. Give me Acts 3.19 and then Matthew 26 will close out. And make sure you get in contact uh, with these officers, all right? If y'all serious, y'all do the same. Read this. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Come on. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So that's what it's about. We out here to teach repentance to our people. Repent means you were doing one thing, and you stopped and turned away from your sins. That's what it's talking about. Sin no more. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. 
Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.